All right, well, welcome to uh, World Regional Geography, uh, the winter edition. I'm going to begin today uh, with our first lecture, and this is really a question of, so what is geography anyway? And oftentimes when I teach this class, this is the first thing that we kind of need to get straight, which is, what is geography and what isn't geography? Most of you will come to this class having some idea of what you think geography is, and for most people, that's not at all what the reality of geography is. So let's get a couple things straight here. First of all, um, what we need to understand is that geography is not these things. Um, let's go back and say, okay, what is geography? Well, geography is not the study of capitals or the study of the names of countries or memorizing rivers. Um, geography is not simply about memorizing where things are on a map. That's not what geography is. Although certainly geography uh, does use those as tools, uh, as do most disciplines. Um, if we really want to study the names of places, there is a, a discipline, a sub-area, that we call toponymy, um, which is the study of where and why things are named the way they are. So what is geography then? Well, in some respects, geography is kind of an awkward sentence, uh, and I like to always begin with this. Geography is the study of what's, the where's of those what's, and the why's, those what's, are where they are. Now, I realize that's a terrible sentence, but let's, let's take it apart here. Geography is the study of phenomena, and it's important to understand, geography really can look at anything. It can look at uh, disease, uh, epidemiology is a geographic exploration of disease and disease movement, disease distribution. It can study cultural phenomena. We can study the distribution and evolution of Dixieland music. Uh, geography studies any phenomena. But the important thing is that geography studies the distribution of phenomena. That is, it studies where things are, where they aren't, what things are near other things, and why they are that way. So again, study of what's phenomena, the where's of those what's, that is the distribution of phenomena. We can look at that in many different ways we're going to see this semester. And then we're going to look at the why's. And the why's, in a sense, are the processes that lead to distributions. Why do religions occur in some places and not in others? How have religions spread through time? How is language different from place to place? What cultural traits or behaviors, customs, are located in one place and not in the other? And in this sense, geography is then a methodological discipline. That is, it looks at anything, but it looks at it through the lens of space and place. Now, as an example, this is a quick map that I put together. And again, we're going to talk about maps later on in the second lecture about what maps really are. But in this case, what I want you to note is that this is a map that shows the distribution of microbreweries, and this happens to be in eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Uh, the microbreweries are little gold dots. And then it is also at the county level, um, and actually this is at, uh, this shows in 2016, what was the alcoholic beverage spending per household per year in each of those. And what you'll notice is that microbreweries tend to be located in moderately high alcohol consumption areas. So geography looks at where things occur and how different things co-occur in space. Now, we can look at it also at scale. Geography, when we talk about wares of things, we can also look at the wares at different scales. So this is most of the United States. And one of the things that you're going to notice is that microbreweries, if we look at it at a larger scale, what we're going to see is that microbreweries do not occur where there is low alcohol spending. You'll notice in the south of the United States, there's relatively low alcohol spending. And it's an interesting question as to why. And then where there are high levels of spending, there also appears to be microbreweries. So these two things co-occur. And we're going to begin to ask those types of questions. So geography, if you've done the reading, really deals with five big, broad themes. Uh, themes of space or location, place, the interaction of humans and their environment, movement through space, and then, in a sense, what this class is really about, which is region. And region, in some respects, pulls all of those things 
together in a coherent whole. So let me take these five apart, um, and that will wrap up this introductory lecture in terms of what geography is. So in a sense, when geographers say they're going to deal with space or location, we can ask the question again, where are these microbreweries? That's a locational question. We can also ask the question about distances. And in this case, you will notice what I have on here is what we call a drive time. And that is if we look at the space that is available if you drove for five minutes from Slippery Rock, how much area could you cover? Or 30 minutes? Or 60 minutes? What would be those areas? And you'll see those, those zones here. And those zones are not regular. In fact, they're influenced by the space that is occupied by major interstates, interstates that have different speed limits. And we're going to get to that when we talk a little bit about movement. But space and location is, in a sense, that where. Where are things? What is their distribution? Now, we can also, though, talk about place. And space and place are two kind of opposite sides of the same coin. When we talk about place, what we're talking about is what makes a location unique. What are those unique characteristics? And what I have here to kind of pull these things together, we just looked at the spatial distribution of microbreweries. But if we look at downtown Slippery Rock, you'll notice here is a picture of the uh, North Country Brewery, a microbrewery that was established in Slippery Rock in the last decade. And then adjacent to that is a bank. And in this case, we also see the Camelot, which is a small diner, and a Sheets. And so what makes place are this unique combination of things and their interrelation, how we understand the where of something. What is it that makes Slippery Rock Slippery Rock? That's place. And geographers are very interested in that unique characteristic of a place. Now, we can also look at human environment interactions. And this is, in a sense, the physical geography, the physical context for space and place and, and the other things we're going to talk about. What I have here is for December 20th, 2017, these are the actual uh, forecasted flows for the major stream networks in the eastern part of the United States. Now, I use this as an example because, in a sense, the environment is, in effect, simply the flow through these. But the, humans, uh, the human interaction is the question of how do we monitor these, why do we monitor them, how does stream flow influence human activities, human economies, risk, and behavior? And so we're going to look at things in terms of how humans understand their environment, how their environment influences decision-making, and in fact, how humans modify their environment. Now, movement. Movement's an interesting issue in terms of how geography looks at things. And what I have here, this is a, a, an interesting data set. And what it shows is the predominance of populations based on either daytime or nighttime. In other words, does the population stay in place or does it leave? And what you'll notice here is that if we look at Pittsburgh, that big pink diamond, Pittsburgh is primarily a daytime population. It's a large daytime population. But what it says is that in, at the nighttime, the people that occupy Pittsburgh during the day largely leave. In other words, there's a dramatic change in population. The difference between the population during the day to the night is very, very dramatic. But you'll notice all around Pittsburgh, there are small nodes where the dominance is nighttime population. And again, all of those areas are people that sleep there, but then migrate out of their homes or their neighborhoods or their towns during the day. And so this is how one way that geographers study movement. We can study movement in terms of where people are at different times of the day, how they move through space, what modes of transportation do they use. All these things are about movement and the connections of locations and space. Now, lastly, and again, this is very important for this class, is the concept of region. Geographers understand, like many disciplines, that human beings work most efficiently when we can categorize things. If you think about biology or chemistry, we put things into classes. Into, for example, we have groups of compounds, or we have 
uh, genuses in terms of organisms, or even most broadly kingdoms. Well, geographers look at the world and we divide the world into these groupings that we call world regions. And these regions have distinct characteristics in terms of their economies, their physical extent, their cultural and historical characteristics, and their interconnectedness. This semester, we are going to look at these regions and we're going to ask the question why these regions matter and what characterizes them. So throughout the semester, I want you to ask those questions. What is it that makes this region a region? And is the region still valid? These regions have been defined for a very long time, and their boundaries are beginning to become much, much more uh, permeable in terms of uh, issues of globalization and new economic connections. So with that, we're going to end our first lecture and we will begin uh, next time with the study of the physical context. So we will see you then.